Welcome to another Average Guy adventure. This time, it's in foul weather. Jeanette asked me, what do you want for your birthday? Well, obviously, another photo adventure. It's November. It's the time of year that the snow is pushing down to lower elevations. That usually means the best bet for an adventure, at least around here, is the coast. For my birthday, I chose to spend the weekend just across the mouth of the Columbia River on the Long Beach Peninsula in Washington. It's so full of history and unique scenery. But first, we had to get there. We're at Long Beach Peninsula. It's my birthday weekend. We're celebrating with the trip. I wanted to go and do some photography and the weather just did not cooperate. As you can see, it's not ideal weather, but I'm determined to try anyway. Sometimes uh, making that extra effort can make for some of the best photographs. You get the most dramatic lighting, less crowds, and you see something that everybody sees, but you see it differently. These winds were a greater barrier than I had anticipated. I had to squint just to see as the sand blasted my face. But I pressed on towards the southern end of the beach because there was Beards Hollow and I hoped there would be a break from the wind and something worth taking a photo. When I arrived, it was like I entered another room. The wind was blocked by the rocks, and the sun even came out. I kind of got up this morning and I was raring to go and my family was not too happy about going out in the bad weather and I can't blame them. But I was undeterred so I decided to hike down the beach to a place called Beards Hollow. I used to go there a lot as a kid so I'm familiar with it and I wanted to see if I can catch some photos. As soon as I got there the sun came out. It was a miracle. We didn't think we'd see the sun all day today. It rained so hard last night thought we were going to wash away. I knew the weather was going to be bad, so I'm wearing a raincoat. I keep my camera inside my raincoat, and that way I can just unzip, pull it out, and shoot whenever I need to. And then also, of course, I've got a, a ring fly over my camera bag. Other than that, I try not to change lenses when I'm out in the bad weather. If I do, I try to seek shelter because I don't want to expose the inside of my camera to the, especially around the coast, the harsh salt water conditions. Because of the bad weather, we're spending more time indoors on this trip. And when you're in Long Beach, there's one place that you have to go, and that's Marsh's Free Museum. If you look up Tourist Trap 
in the Wikipedia, I'm sure it has a picture of this place. It is as tourist trap as it gets, but it's actually a lot of fun. So we're gonna go check it out. I promised so if we'd go visit Jake, our friend Jake, the alligator man again. We got real stuff on him. There's a two-headed pig. Frog playing a harp. Ooh. Pirate. Fortune teller. Wish I had 50 cents. There's Jake. After having fun at marshes, we saw it wasn't raining, so we decided to take a drive on the world's longest beach. Perfect. We're going to go to the beach. Woo. Even though this is claimed to be the world's longest beach, it isn't. That distinction lies somewhere in Brazil. I looked it up. This is, however, the United States' longest continuous beach. That means there are no rock outcroppings or man-made piers that break this beach up. One can drive 28 miles without ever leaving the surf and sand. Boy, the weather is holding. One thing about November in the Pacific Northwest, the sun sets early, especially behind gray skies. We were off to find a pizza joint and celebrate my birthday before calling it a day. Hey, we're on our way to go see the lighthouse. The next day we had a late start but headed over to Cape Disappointment. Our first stop was the North Head Lighthouse. These are the lighthouse keeper and the assistant keeper's residences, which are now maintained and rentable for overnight stays by the Washington State Parks.
This is called the North Head Lighthouse. It was built in 1898. We're just north, probably about a mile from Cape Disappointment Lighthouse. Cape Disappointment Lighthouse it was the original lighthouse. It was built in, I think, 1857. I'll have to check that year, but it was built before the Civil War, I know that. So this is a much newer lighthouse, even though it's really old by our standards. So before the jetty was out here, this place was just sand uh, sandbars. They would be exposed during low tide and underwater during high tide. And they're always changing. You never knew where they are. There are more shipwrecks out here. This was called Peacock Spit. And the local residents used to come down here and for years would pick up their lumber and kegs, kegs of butter and kegs of honey and flour from all the shipwrecks. That's how they would supply their lives. It's kind of sad, but uh, it was pretty brutal. I was reading this in some old accounts. being very artsy with the mud on the floor. I was reading this was a weather station. So during World War II, they took weather readings here. These are spotter bunkers. We are in these bunkers up on North Head. During World War II, these were meant to be spotters for the big guns that were down at the forts at the mouth of the Columbia. So if ships approached from the north, they would be spotted here first, and their coordinates relayed back to those guns. So they were tucked away and hidden, as well as fortified, so that the enemy couldn't take them out. Our next stop was Waikiki Beach. Yeah, I said that correctly. There is a Waikiki Beach at Cape Disappointment, and it's a great place to get a view of the Cape D Lighthouse. This place got its name after a Hawaiian sailor's body washed ashore here when a ship went down trying to cross the Columbia River Bar in 1811. So we are at the Lewis and Clark um, Visitor Center, because as you know, I'm not going to go into history right now, but Lewis and Clark ended their journey across America right here. They eventually ended up on the other side of the river, but their first stop was on the north side, and that's where we are right now. So there's a visitor center. I really want to get to the North Head Lighthouse and Dead Man's Cove for photography, but the family they're not too keen about hiking in the rain and I can't say I blame them. That's actually, they're smarter than me and more wise than me. So they're gonna go up and go to the Lewis and Clark Visitor Center. We're going to divide and conquer. So my video from here on out, I will show my adventure and then I will intermingle their adventure in with it. Keep this Jeanette tells me there was a small fee to visit the interpretive center, but it was worth it. The exhibits were very well done and walked you through the journey of Lewis and Clark as they worked their way to this place, the purpose of their mission.
Meanwhile, I was having a totally different experience as I was out in the weather, hiking my way up to Cape Disappointment Lighthouse. We're in Washington, that's looking towards Oregon. This is a very active Coast Guard station and we are on the Coast Guard base. This is an observation booth where during bad weather, someone is always watching the river bar for vessels in distress. What you doing, Soph? Trying to balance the canoe. It swivels and tilts in two directions, or all directions. You have to keep it balanced. I've taken some photos. The family's uh, doing their museum thing and I'm just waiting for a ship to come in across the river bar. I kind of want to get that for a dramatic uh, opportunity. This one. This bit is about where they wanted to spend the winter. They could go on the north side of the Columbia River, or the south side, or they could go back up east. And this display is talking about their decision and where they went. Where did they go? They went to the south side. Of You load of Subarus. Sam's checking out the Fresno. How do you pronounce that? What are you looking at, kid? What you looking at? Meanwhile, I was done at the lighthouse. So I started walking back towards the interpretive center. To get there, I had to go around Dead Man's Cove. This is called Dead Man's Cove. It's kind of a private place, but boy, the wind is nasty. Driving me off the beach. I'm gonna try to get some pictures, but I can't stay long. Look at the phone.
cool looking place. Wish I could spend more time down here. One of the problems about this ocean breeze is the salty air. That's as clean as I can get my lens. I can't wipe it off. I'm gonna have to get some Windex and clean it when I get home. I'm about done here for today though. Sadly, that brought an end to this adventure. We had to go pack up camp and head home and back to our normal lives. Despite the foul weather, we found a way to embrace it as part of the memory instead of choosing to see it as a negative. In the end, we left nothing on the table. As with all my videos, here are the photos that I took that I liked. I chose black and white for most of them as it seemed to make them as dramatic as the scenery and the weather. Thank you for watching another Average Guy video adventure.